Hey my friends, I am Simon, your Mustang Nerd, and if you enjoy this video, please hit the subscribe button right there. And in this series that I've been calling Mustangs in the Movies, we've covered some foxy fox bodies and some flashy new edges, but what I want to look at today are one of my favorite Mustang shapes, the next generation, the S197 Mustang. Now, before we even get into my top three Mustang movie moments, let's talk about what the S197 Mustang is for a second. This was the fifth generation of Mustang coming after the Fox Body and the New Edge Mustangs before it. It was famous for what was known as the retro-futurist style, where what Ford tried to do was take the aesthetics that were most beloved from the late 60s Mustangs and reproduce those in a modern style without looking like a caricature of the original. And I've got to say that I personally feel that they succeeded. I love how aggressive the front end of this Mustang looks, and even the stock V6 reminds me of the Shelby GT500 from the late 60s. Another thing I love about this generation is that we actually see the return of the Shelby GT500, but let me park that until we get into our top three. So let's get down to it. My top three moments where we didn't just see the flash of a fender, these are moments where the S197 Mustang is in a starring role. So like me, you may have watched and then instantly forgotten 2008 Death Race starring Jason Statham and Tyrese Gibson, or maybe you skipped it completely and honestly, you didn't miss too much. You may be forgiven for not even noticing that Jason Statham's car in this movie is a Mustang because it's so heavily modded and so heavily armored, but it is in fact a stock 2006 Mustang GT with a lot of stuff bolted onto it. Mustang V8 Fastback. Took the best. Made it better. That's right, it's not a Celine, it's not a Shelby, it's just a good old fashioned Mustang GT. That's a V8 Roush 5.4 liter with a Ford Racing Supercharger, putting out 850 horsepower and close to 700, 700 pounds of torque with sequential multi-port fuel engine. My favorite scenes in this movie are where the Mustang and a bunch of other pretty awesome cars face off against something pretty terrifying called the Jesus Dreadnought. Christ. So we've actually snipped out some of the more intense and gruesome clips from these scenes, but suffice to say, the Dreadnought takes no prisoners. However, with some fancy driving tricks and some good old-fashioned Mustang muscle, you know that our heroes prevail at the end of the day, the Dreadnought, not so much. So if you know anything about me, you know that I love the Shelby GT500, so it's probably no surprise that I Am Legend makes my top three. There were actually only six of these custom Shelby GT500s that were made for the Will Smith post-apocalyptic movie. Out of those original six, five of them were actually crushed by Ford at the end of filming, and the remaining car actually went up on eBay in November 2009. 19 for the small price of $150,000. And if the person who bought that car is out there enjoying it right now, please remember your old friend Simon and let me take it for a spin. So let's be honest, this movie had some pretty mixed reviews, although I think the consensus was that Will Smith's performance was enough to save the movie from the bargain bins. However, the Shelby GT500 did not fail to impress at all, even if it's just things like hearing the roar of the supercharged V8 as it rumbles down Park Avenue in Manhattan. Or 
before seeing it race after a herd of deer as Will Smith and his faithful dog are out hunting for their dinner. While the cars shown in the movie were just one-off custom models made for the movie itself, the response from the public was so positive and so overwhelming, there was such a landslide of communication with the Shelby company with people wanting to buy that car, that they actually put it back into mass production. So we could very well not have the monsters like the new GT350 or the GT500 that we're seeing now in 2020 if it wasn't for the legacy created by I Am Legend. Now in first place, in the very first Michael Bay Transformers movie, we have the Decepticon Barricade played by a 2005 custom-made Celine Mustang. This was one of only three custom police cruiser Mustangs created by Celine exclusively for this movie. Now, I'm not trying to create any conspiracy theories here, but considering the amount of product placement from General Motors cars in this movie, is it any wonder that the poor old Mustangs are painted as the bad guys? Well, I'll let you decide. Now Barricade is pretty scary, he's a big, tough, evil Decepticon bad guy with all manner of spiky weapons, however time and again the hero of the movie, the heroic Autobot Bumblebee, gives him a whooping. Cyclops, Decepticons approaching junkyard target. And in true Mustang style, Barricade just keeps on ticking. Every time you think he's dead and beaten, he comes back. And in this case, we're talking about the most recent Transformers movie, The Last Night, when he comes back in the form of a really cool looking 2016 Celine Mustang. And Michael Bay does not disappoint with a roaring car chase through the streets of a small town, even including Dinobots. So there you have it, my top three S197 Mustang movie moments. And if you enjoyed this, please hit that subscribe button because we will be back with more Mustangs and movies very, very soon. Peace out, my friends. Shut up and sit down.